the first one, the, the first IL-23 that got the approval in 2017 was, was trim five. So mm -hmm. that's what ushered us into this specific, not an IL-12, IL-23 shared, you know, uh, targeting that we saw with Stellara. So that's the first one that came. And, and, and it was really the first one that set its primary endpoint as a POSI-90. So it was raising the bar right off the bat. So at a primary endpoint of POSI-90, and it was hitting that primary uh, endpoint with, with great success. I mean, there was a, in the Voyage 1 and Voyage 2 trials, there was a 70 and 73% POSI-90 at 16 weeks. That's very impressive. And those numbers even go up as you look at, at the data at 28 weeks and 52 weeks. And the one thing I've liked about, uh, liked, have, have liked about Trim 5 since then is that they've added other, you know, other trials have come out with the Navigate and Eclipse. And those trials are comparing it with Humira and comparing it with Stellara. So they have a lot of comparator data that's out there. It's, it's a lot of robust data, it's diverse data, and it's real world looking at folks that have failed Stellara and then transitioned over compared directly with, with Humira. So I think they've got some good data with that IL-23 that shows us that this works well, has raised the bar, and we saw that bar continued with Rizikimumab or Sky, Sky Rizzi also, you know, coming out with POSI-90, POSI-100 data, uh, not weight didn't seem to make it play play a role in in that uh, product either, um, so it's nice. It's nice to have these things that are so good at getting people yeah, all the way. They're clear. phenomenal, yeah. and there are so. very few diseases that have drugs available to treat them that can offer a patient. When you say a posi ninety, what you have to remember it could be it's anywhere between they've met at least a ninety percent improvement rate in their posi score. It could be all the way up to ninety nine percent. Right. So at least 90% improvement in three quarters of the patients within, and if you look at the, the um, endpoints at 16 weeks, don't think that it's gonna be that many months before they begin to see improvement. It's not uncommon for you to give them their first injection and then four weeks later with the 23s when they come back in for their second one, you're already seeing significant clearance and mm -hmm. significant reduction in their itch factors, symptoms, I was their say. symptoms. symptoms. Yeah. A lot of it will clear. You'll see the, the central clearing beginning to, to develop. And at the minute they stop scratching, the kebnerization effect will start to also play a role. And people overall just having a sense of, sense of, of um, more well-being, of just feeling better. And something with the, um, when you were talking about the dosing of Stellara, versus the Trimphia earlier, um, you know, the Stellar was every 12 weeks, so I had most patients come into the office. Also because they had the pre-filled syringe that spring-loaded, so I gave a lot of feedback, you know, about that, because I do think it's a difficult device for patients to use, the pre-filled spring-loaded syringe. Almost takes two thumbs. Yeah, and there are a couple of devices like that, but new with Trimphia is the one-touch, um, one-press, um, and it is a device that's a little easier, I think, for uh, patients who maybe have dexterity issues, um, but it is not spring-loaded. So I like that, and I'm hoping that some of the other agents that don't have either a pin or a device, you know, have the same. But I usually use it in the thigh on patients because it's indicated for the thigh or the abdomen, but I think you do have to put pressure on it. So I do think if you do that in the abdomen, it's harder for patients on themselves, but on the thigh, I, I've... It's got nice been, ergonomics, too. It's, yes. it's wider, it's easier to hold. Yes. I, think, I think for patients, that, that, that trim thigh injector is very nice. And I think those are all really important things that factor into our decision. And, you know, I, I use a lot of rizikinumab and, and gulcicumab, and I will tell you that, um, you know, patient lifestyle, Many travel, they don't want. They don't want to go back. They've been on maybe used to kinemab. They do not want to go back to every four weeks. Yeah. When you review the profile with patients, and I have a, a lot of very educated patients, and, you know, we look at these 23s, and, you know, especially um, if they have severe plaque psoriasis, and we sit and discuss it, some of them are a little nervous about, uh, you know, the, the um, inflammatory risk of inflammatory bowel disease with the, I, the 17s. Mm -hmm. But we also talk about, you know, both of us, what is the risk for psoriatic arthritis? That plays into my decision about those. And many do pick the 23s and they are phenomenal. I just make sure I tell those patients, you know, just give it a little bit more time. That's the kind of thing. So that when I see that, you, you're not gonna see as, as, as rapid, as clear initially as you might anticipate with some of the other products. And as long as they know I think and they can anticipate that they're good. As long as they know whether there's one injection, two injections, 
the whole pill concept goes out the window. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do whatever it takes to have that clear skin because they want that experience. It cannot be more simple. It cannot be more simple than having a therapy that you could administer at home and that you only have to inject really infrequently. Right. And mm -hmm. if you think of gasucumumab as being a dose mm -hmm. six times a year, and I will tell them, if you'll give me, really, if you're talking about five minutes, six times a year. Mm -hmm. And, and that's just the first year, right? Yeah. After that, it's four to five times a year. Yeah. And that's just with the loading dose, yeah. the six. As, so. as you really begin to, to think about that is, is just that's beyond. When back in, again, 20 years ago, when they did an assessment of how long are you spending applying topical therapies, yes. it was yeah. 35, 36 minutes is what mm -hmm. the data said that people were spending a day applying topical therapies because one went on the scalp, one went in the gluteal cleft. Another went on the elbows and knees, and sometimes you had to occlude it. And then to drive over to get phototherapy uh, three times a week for it to be effective, the drive over, the parking, going in, you get your treatment, and then you leave. And then none of these had, th had response rates of hitting a 90-plus percent improvement in their POSI score and the right. symptom relief with the speed at which we were seeing it and with the ease. So you're literally talking about, and then I'll say, if I, I need to see you a couple times a year because the even if they're gonna be injecting at home, I still wanna see them a couple times a year. Once a year, we're gonna reorder your medicine, fill out all the paperwork that I need to make sure that I'm gonna be able to get this drug approved. Right. And also just to make sure that what you may not think is an issue might be something of concern because uh, with the 17s, I've loved them. They've been very, very, very effective in people with psoriatic disease. But sometimes there are some yeast infections that people didn't even realize were associated with being being right. on a 17 treatment. Yeah. 